Hello, this is Truth Be Told Transformation, and I'm Bonnie Burkert, here to share tools for transformation to live your highest truth. So my truth, one of my high truths, is understanding energy. And that could take lots of different forms. It could be what you eat, how much you rest, but it also takes uh, also, you have to talk, think about how you're maybe digesting what you're watching, what you're listening to. Why not listen to a high vibe, a podcast like this? So let's talk further about this. How can knowing our energy help us get to what we want? Well, to that effect, I have invited an expert to talk to us today. Hi, Mar- Maria Martinez. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. So excited to be here with you. you (laughs) Cheers. Um, We know about Maria because she's going to be at the Conscious Life Expo this coming February at the LAX Hilton. So people have a chance to see you in person there, Maria. So why don't we talk about um, your panels that you'll be offering and and what you uh, imagine Expo to be like this year? Yeah, so I'm really excited to be there. Uh, lots of great energy. Like, yeah. What I'm feeling about the expo is just so many beautiful frequencies coming in for everyone. Um, the speakers holding the space, a beautiful alchemy, as well as uh, everybody coming and experiencing that alchemy in whatever their intention is with, while being there. And I was guided to create two very powerful one workshop, one, uh, it's a lecture. Uh, one is energy alchemy, so is divine alchemy, uh, divine human. And we're going to go through the understanding of who we are at the multidimensional level, how we read energy and how to use and direct energy to create what we desire and to heal ourselves and move into the divine alignment so that we can embody more of our flow, uh, more of who we are in the world and allow life to be easier. In that in that process, I'll be teaching about how to heal the parts of you that resist, how to heal the parts of you that are still in trauma, how to heal the parts of you that are uncomfortable living into your greatest life. So it's going to be very powerful and very exciting. And we're going to have different activations, uh, guided imagery, meditation, even movement uh, during that process. And then the second one is quantum manifestation. We as beings, as at the time of creation, we were giving our divine abundance and divine fortune. But through the separation and the not knowing, we've moved away from our source abundance. So in that lecture, I'm also going to talk about coming back to that place of source abundance, being universal wealth. And then activating that from the DNA level and how we can do that. And then and then steps to manifesting it into our reality. So both lectures are going to be very powerful. People are going to walk away with not just new practices and tools, but also very different. Because as we come together, I'm going to bring in new frequencies of transformation, especially new frequencies that are coming in this year. Uh, as well as uh, using light language uh, in hypnosis, hypnotherapy, uh, NLP, and other modalities that are part of my uh, proprietary technology, my blended up technology that I created for quantum acceleration. So I'm so excited for everybody to attend and everybody to experience a new version of themselves and then be in that place of inspired action. (laughs) <laughs> that's so, that's so great. Yeah, I I know that Tony Sweet for sure is going to be um, at the event. So keep an eye open for him. I'm unfortunately going to travel, so I'm not going to see you. Where are you calling um, in from, Maria? By the way, I, I'm in Riverside, California. Oh, you're not too far. Okay, next time we get you in the studio, please. All right. <laughs> so you mentioned some technologies that you've created. What? Well, um, so can you give us a little example of what that might might be like? And I love the term technology when it's used with um, exercises for our vessel. So I am a Kundalini yogi, and we often refer to some of the um, exercises that we do as technology. So I like that. Uh, I, I find it's very activating a term like that. So. Tell me what yours are like. Yeah, very much uh, like what you described. Uh, 
what we do in the process is we tune into the frequencies that we're in and the frequencies that were available, that were available all around us, that, you know, source frequencies, and even the frequencies that our divine team is bringing in. And we look at the frequencies as well that are embedded into our field from past lifetimes, from other dimension, other realms. And we, be, we begin to move and we begin to create alchemy around them, move them, transform them into something higher so that we are moving into a higher alignment. Um, and we do that through light language. We do that through deep coming into the deep space within us, that zero point energy. So coming in, into the void of who we are. And then opening up to allow the flow of higher frequencies, 963, a source frequency, and then allowing that to flow through our field. So it becomes naturally uh, or natural for us to be in that frequency of source. And then we go into the DNA as well, and we look at the codes. So we turn on codes that are off, we turn up off codes that are overworking or creating and it's something that is not in alignment. Uh, we also repair those that are in the DNA, and we also detox the cellular level in this process. So, it, you know, it's it's the process that we go to, but those are the, the the key things that we look at, and we upgrade, we recalibrate, we create a new structure. We are we architecting our divine in that process. I love that word recalibration. I think it's just such an interesting term to to um, <laughs> you know to apply and to welcome in. Sometimes it's like if I'm having a sluggish moment, it's like you know maybe I just need to rest and and recalibrate, and then it's like I come back into uh, that energy. So I've I've titled our talk here "Energy Alchemy" and. The term alchemy, I mean, certainly through my many episodes of doing this, we it's got plenty of modern applications, but I still like to talk about it. I still like mm -hmm. to talk about your understanding and that use of that term, because it's got kind of an olden, olden time lore around the turning, mm -hmm. what was it, iron into gold? Iron or lead to gold. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And working around metals. So... I always like to welcome a little conversation mm -hmm. around just that word alchemy. So dive in and yeah. tell me what you think and how you chose to start using that word and how you've experienced it yourself. Yeah. And so when we think about alchemy, it's really transformation. It's that turning, that conversion. Of, so if you look at the old days of either lead into gold, what we're doing is that the lower in the lower density or the lower emotions or the lower vibrations were we're converting and we're transforming them into a higher, uh, which is usually the color of gold, right? So in that metaphor, it we're kind of saying the same thing. And the way I like to look at it is that um, when we're holding something in our body that is now light, pure light, pure source frequency, that is creating heaviness and, and sluggishness and feelings of being stuck, feelings of overwhelm. And that is also showing up in our environment. It's showing up by things not going our way, it's showing up by people not showing up in the way we want them to show up, to show up, or by us not being able to attract or manifest the things that we desire. So the process of alchemy is looking at things that are not working for you, not in your highest good. And so we look at the mental aspect of that, and we look at the emotional aspect of that, and we look at the energetic aspect of that, because everything is energy. And we look at what is the frequency that that is holding, what is the energy that's, that that's holding. And we begin to transform that into light, into a higher frequency, higher vibration. There, there's the alchemy. And we do that through breath. We do that through other practices, that movement. We do that uh, through intention. And we do that, do that by bringing in releasing old frequencies, old heaviness, and bringing and replacing that. So we create a void and we replace that with a higher frequency. Um, and again, there's a process to do that. Um, some of it could be very quick, so we take a little bit more time. But what I like to think about alchemy, uh, first of all, is being in a cup. Like, we are creator beings, and we've created our reality based on what we took in, based on what we know, and the environment. 
And that has accumulated in our field, in our DNA, in our cellular level. And it's what is now at the moment. So in order to change that, we get to switch it out. We get to up-level it. We get to upgrade it. We get to transform it or transmute it into something that is uh, more vibrant, more joyful, uh, something that feels more aligned with us, something that feels more um, inspiring for us, uh, something that brings us a, a higher level of fulfillment. And uh, in, in that process of transformation, we are in, we are discovering more of ourselves, we're embodying more of ourselves, we're moving into our sovereignty, uh, and this flow, so this conversion of energy, this flow, uh, becomes part of our natural process, because we step into it, we said yes to it, we said yes to looking at our shadow side, we said yes to diving in and looking at the, the parts of us that we suppress, the parts of us that we reject, or the parts of us that we don't want to look at. So by turning our attention to all of those parts, healing those parts of ourselves, we are doing that transformation, we're doing that conversion, we're doing that chemical, uh, biologically, energetically, mentally and emotionally. And that chemical reaction is happening. That, that's the, the alchemy of our soul. Uh, our soul has a lot of memories of the past. And also it's the vibrancy of our physical body uh, and it's affected by the emotions and it's affected by the mindset and the stories that we carry and the things that we tell ourselves so as we are looking at the totality of who we are in the moment and where we want to go or who we want to become or embody and we're gently with loving kindness moving things out of the way allowing, you know, bringing in more light, bringing in more love, bringing in more forgiveness, bringing in more acceptance. We're allowing those old lower frequencies or the frequency that those old belief systems have become something higher. Joy, happiness, as, um, ability to receive more, ability to embody our self-worth. That is the alchemy. And that is at the physical, mental, emotional, soul, spiritual, level, energetic level. I love it. Shine on. It's true. <laughs> so let me ask you, I've never asked this question before, but I think you'd be an interesting person to give some insights. Where are people at with understanding what we're talking about here? The use of energy, working with the shadow side. Where are people at? You are, you are a coach. You are a personal development coach, not only in kind of on the spiritual sense, but also in the business world, right? You do coaching and things yes. like that. Pre-COVID, pre-2020, mm -hmm. the lost year, mm -hmm. and post. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, is there a quickening? I mean, are people getting it, wanting mm -hmm. it a bit more so now that we've gotten through sort of, I mean, whatever. I don't want to say through the pandemic. I don't want to say that. But you know, there was a spell of time mm -hmm. that okay. it was a shift of sorts. And um, where are we at? Where do you think it's all, how, how do you think it's all playing out? Yeah, absolutely. There was a big shift during that time. And a lot of people came into their real the realization of more, right? There must be something more. But either we can get stuck in this, oh my gosh, this is happening to me and I have no control over it. Um, feeling suppressed by whatever was happening in being stuck at home plus all the other restrictions, uh, government restrictions, medical restrictions, um, community restrictions, to what can I create from here? So moving out of that place of feeling this empowered to where can I find the freedom in who I am? Where can I find the you know, the joy of who I am? How can I make this experience better? And I did see a lot of people reaching out for help, a lot of people reaching out for um you know, this is not the life that I want, or this is not the state that I want to be in, whether it was emotional state, mental state, uh, state of consciousness. And I, even now, I still see a lot of people really embody more of their power. So it felt like that time was an awakening of, okay, now I really feel powerless. Now I feel um, like my power is being stripped. I feel a bit hopeless, you're hopeless. And that um, it was like a catalyst for people to stop to, to stop letting the environment control them to 
I want to be in my power and I, be, I want to be in control of my life and design my life in a way that works for me. And where do I begin? Where, where do I start? What do I now? What can I now in this moment have control over? And that is my mind and my emotions and how I relate to the world. So I did see a big uptake in that, a big uptake in people just really stepping up into how do I design my life and how I see life. And then the journey for many people continued from there, but that was also the beginning of many other people. Yeah, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's interesting insights, and I just figured you might have some thoughts on that. And so, again, back to mentioning the fact, you know, I saw on your website that, um, and please tell us your website so that people can find you. 360prosperity.com. 360prosperity.com. What are your corporate clients like? What do they want from you? How, how I feel like even businesses are starting to understand some of this terminology we're using and, and uh, wanting to really empower their employees, um, you know, body, mind, and spirit. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, what I'm seeing more um, people coming forward is balance, happiness, and fulfillment. And in wanting that, then we've been able to go into the other levels of spirituality, mindfulness, meditation, breath work, and even further deeper into, you know, lifetimes, regression, um, healing, personal healing, inner child healing. And with my business clients, a lot of times they come to me because they're already high performers. Uh, they've created a successful business and they're looking for that next breakthrough. They've put in a lot of work. Things were going well, but they feel like they're hitting that wall and don't know how to get to the next level. Right. And what we find is that next level is themselves. Like the next level is them being more in flow, accessing more of their power, their potential, and being that fuel for the next step versus putting work, like create a new action plan is more about the beingness than the doingness and then also empowering others so leading leading others modeling becoming and then supporting others to step into the space of becoming as well the next highest version of themselves and it's a, it's very powerful uh, when somebody who's really successful you know millionaire comes in and they say okay you know it's it's like stepping into that place of transparency and being really humble and saying, okay, what's next for me? I'm ready to go deep. I'm ready to look at myself. I'm ready to look at this aspect of myself so that I can be even better than I've been before and also create the space for others. And some of them are coaches. Some of them are influencers. And they're holding the space for others to step into their millionaire, step into their yeah, multimillionaire company. So it's very beautiful to see these clients yeah, really being vulnerable and really raw with themselves and allow themselves to heal those deeper aspects of themselves so that they can create that space for others to really step into. So they're, as they come in, they're more willing. They're more um, in that place of receptivity. Um, and they're, um, I also see that they're uh, more inspired to hear the universe, listen to the universe, see what's next. So some of them are, are coming in and asking to be more in their flow, more more connected to themselves. But some of them are just simply asking for, I want to be the best version of myself. Uh, I want to feel more balanced. I want to feel more joyful. But they're asking for the same thing. They're asking for, you know, closing those gaps that are still there, uh, being able to run their frequency and be in overflow being able to, you know, be in that place where they can access their higher wisdom and allow those downloads of creativity and leadership and problem solving to come through. Uh, they're asking, you know, to create a space of kindness and compassion and powerful leadership for their team. So it's very beautiful and powerful. It's good to hear. It's encouraging, you know. I mean, I think that as we talk about 
you know, what you were talking about with people during 2020, how it's like, oh, what am I doing? And a lot of people didn't want to do to work in the same way. And I feel like businesses are definitely understanding that they need to evolve as people are evolving with their, their needs that it's nice. It's, it's good to see that on a lot of different levels. It's not just, you know, flex work schedule. And we're talking, I mean, a whole different type of communication and and really respect for the work life balance, which is I know certainly one of my New Year's resolutions more than anything is to watch watch that, um, you know, find find some boundaries in that myself. So, yeah, yeah. So more heart centered, uh, more compassion, more leadership, uh, a different level of accountability, not the performance accountability that's sort of in, in expressed. But it's more about the beings, like showing up fully in the workplace, being present, listening and listening yeah. with compassion. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Something we probably don't do <laughs> nearly enough. So we were talking a little bit about timeline. We brought about 2020 and, you know, here we are in 2024 already. And you had mentioned that there's kind of, um, you know, some new frequencies coming in this year. And it's certainly mm-hmm. an, I've heard it from others. And I'd love your take on that. And what what are you feeling so far a couple of weeks in? Yeah, lots of lots of uh, wealth, abundance frequencies are coming in. Um and especially for the people that are really owning their worth and their value, it almost feels like it's just happening. That these frequencies that are coming in are frequencies that really we've been working. So people like really have been focusing on their value, their self-worth. And these frequencies are now coming in to continue to heal uh, those aspects of ourselves connected to money and money story, um, as well as owning power. So another frequency that, we, that I'm seeing a lot of is uh, owning all own power, moving from the victim to empowered creator, empowered uh, manifester and builder. And so it's great to, you know, sort of to understand and know that what is available to us. If there's, if we understand that there's a frequency of wealth, abundance and prosperity, then we can move into that frequency. We can call it in, we can intend, we can meditate and, and be the channel for it. We can also do affirmations around it. We can also do uh, gratitude action around it or gratitude embodiment around it. The same thing with owning your power, especially if we're moving from um, um, feeling like things weren't working for us or feeling like things were or the universe wasn't cooperating, or life wasn't cooperating with us to feeling empowered. That's so shifting the way we are seeing the world, the way we're relating to the world from a place of I am the creator, as I shift internally, then the world changes around me. So what am I shifting into? Um, More leadership, more courage, being bold, resilient, compassion, loving kindness, love. And then the world shifts around me. So these are all um, beautiful ways of us embodying this new frequency that are coming in. Another frequency is that I, that I noticed is this is a miracle of healing. It's a frequency of miracle healing. And it's, for some of us, it's instant healing. For others, it is, I mean, in us, an instant healing. And it may not show immediately in the same day, but it shows up pretty quickly. Uh, this miracle of healing is about healing those old parts of ourselves, healing, you know, the aspects that have been fragmented and splintered off um, and that either we've been working with, have been aware of, uh, and what this frequency is doing is actually allowing us to embody stores and universal love so that we can more gently bring those parts in without resistance, without having to dive into the pain or the suffering, without the blame and the fault and the guilt and the shame. So these are all very, very powerful. And then there's another frequency that is about the embodiment. So it's the embodiment of our higher selves, the embodiment of all these frequencies. So this is about our tuning into the new earth, into you know um, everything that uh, it's the universal frequencies that are coming in. And for all of this, in reality, we don't really need to do anything because we're going to up level from where we are. But we can also be very intentional to create this catapult or you know to fast track ourselves into. Uh, they're receiving the embodiment and then allowing that all these frequencies also to move through the alchemy of what we're working through 
and facilitate more, accelerate more of what we desire and what we're creating. So it's a perfect time for everybody to kind of sit down and really look at in this year, what am I living into? What is the next version of my life? What is the big, big version of what I'm creating? Keeping in mind all these different frequencies and how we want them to play. So we're inviting them to come in and play with us. We're inviting them to create, help us create that foundation of more and more. And we're also inviting them to support us in surrendering and allowing the universe to be our divine. Hmm. Align with the divine, (laughs) as you were saying. It's true. I mean, I definitely kind of came through generationally. I definitely, and I think of also where I live. I I come from the Midwest and um, there was this sort of, you got to work hard. Okay, get back to work. Work, work, work. And oh my gosh, Maria, I am just so, I I so want to surrender to what you're saying here. And yet... I've definitely got some programming of, you know, just having to, it's not even necessarily push. I'm not Mm -hmm. pushing others, but I'm pushing myself. Mm -hmm. And I've had that message said to me a long time. And it's, I always, you know, this is the benefit of me getting to do a show and talking to wise people. I always have my own aha moments, but people have, I've heard through healers through the years, don't be so hard on yourself. You're too hard on yourself. So sounds to me like what you're saying is that maybe we're in a time where this is this is changing Mm -hmm. right yeah it's where we get to be more in trust i believe in myself i trust myself i'm good enough and and moving more into the i am uh, not just within ourselves but the universe so i am universal love i am universal love i am a universal compassion i am universal wealth so it's beyond ourselves, and now we are uh, we can hold that frequency not just for ourselves but for others, and, and this is part of the the change that is also happening. That you know we are all contributions to the world in many different ways. We have a frequency, we have a vibration, uh, we have an energy signature that affects. It's essential and affects everything. You know, the ascension of Earth, and it creates a ripple effect of, uh, around us. So the more we embody universal frequencies, universal beings, then we move out of the I have to do this, I have to do that, and we move into it's just happening because I'm holding the space, I'm the divine channel for it, I'm the vessel for it, and it just completely flows through me with peace and grace. I embody it and I have the intention of what I'm doing, and I get guided action and I follow um, guided action and everything is orchestrated for me and around me by the universe as I hold the frequency of I am. I am. And it goes also beyond I am because sometimes I, when we say I am, we're also saying that we're not enough. I'm sorry, I, not, I am enough. We're saying that we're not enough. So we, we want to go into the space of, of course, I am the vessel. I am the channel of everything that is possible. And then we want to allow that to be so. So there's a, a um, bit of getting out of our own way. And when we consistently do that, get out of our own way, and we surrender to the flow, we surrender to source frequency, source energy, then everything that we create, is ex- it becomes exponential. What we create from our doingness becomes amplified. Because now we're in that divine partnership, we're in that divine flow. We're doing our, you know, two percent or twenty percent, and the universe is doing this. But <laughs> no, I like that. I definitely like that. It's it's really true, and it's so interesting to to see how it's changed. And certainly, I've I've changed along the way, um, and in figuring this out, and really having a chance to, you know, uh, there's this saying, "Let go and let God." It it all applies, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's ultimately what you are saying here. Yes, absolutely. It's <laughs> that remembering that we're not alone. Right? Remembering that we're not alone. We have our divine team. We have our higher self. We have the universe. They're all part of you know, our path and our journey together. So we can lean into that team that we have, into that resource, into that support. We do what we can, and then we feel balanced with what what we can, you know, what we do. 
when they go up the gale stream fall to all of that, which is okay. I did what I could today and I did it to the best of my ability and the rest was taken care of. Yeah. Maria, um, you're so eloquent and, and really come to us with um, some some really great, um, sophisticated concepts and um, techniques, and yet you make it very simple um, for us to understand and, and hopefully practice, certainly, with your um, guidance. You. I'd like to ask some of your background. I mean, how did you figure this out? What were some of your early aha moments that um, helped you really start to walk this path? Oh, thank you for asking that. I've actually been walking that path for a very long time. Um, as young as I, five years old, I remember talking to my guy, uh, talking to Spirit, Jesus, Mother Mary, um, others that have passed on, like my grandparents. So I sort of came in with this awareness, knowing, though it was, um, it was, you know, didn't really have a lot of control over it when I was very young. It sort of just would happen. Uh, so I was fortunate, again, to be able to see, hear, feel, know uh, beyond the 3D, beyond the veil, beyond the illusion. Uh, and then throughout my journey, uh, they continued being my guides. Um, uh, their angelic beings would come in and support me. And my pivot point, my first pivot point was when I was in college. When I went to college, it was a different environment. I was away from home. So it was like a little bit out of my comfort zone, maybe even a little traumatic. And that created an amplification of my gifts. So all of a sudden, I was having different beings coming in from different realms and dimensions. I would be sitting in my dorm and I looked, you know, there's one dimension open, another dimension open, another dimension open. Or um, I would, you know, be asleep and all of a sudden I would be uh, awakened by a visitor um, and it got to the point where I didn't want to go to sleep because I knew something was going to happen so it became a little disruptive when I was in school so I came home and I told my mom about it and of course she knew that I had this gift because I had been sharing with her throughout many years experience so we had a friend who's a shaman and I, I, I had already had some initiation but that she became my first mentor. That was the time where she was, she said, okay, it's time. And we started with tarot to help me uh, hone my skills. So that was the first um, tool that I used to really be able to have some level of mastery over who I was, um, what was already happening around me, so that I can have some level of normalcy. And then throughout the years, I just was guided to different things. I, I'm very passionate about the totality of who we are. And we are mind, we're emotions, we are soul, we're spirit, we're energy, and we're multidimensional beings. We live many different lifetimes. So the understanding of that and the helping others understand who they are at every level it's very, you know, something that I'm very passionate about because it's very empowering and creative being in their life and designing their life. So that led me to different things like uh, learning Akashic records, um, tarot, tarot as early astrology, NLP, and therapy, hypnosis, other types of energy work, energy alchemy, alchemy, uh, different um, aspects of shamanism. So. All of, the, all of these things that I've been called to do are things that I, are a memory that me from different things. And I've just been sort of awakening those parts of who I am throughout my development. And I bring that all when I'm working with somebody, whether it's for personal development or healing the body or business. When I'm in front of someone, I allow myself to be in the space of zero point energy being the channel so that whatever is in the highest good will come through and sometimes it may be looking at their past life sometimes it may be looking at the unconscious mind sometimes they may be looking at energy attachments or entities around them. so just allow everything that i sort of awakened through my journey to come through and create that perfect session and perfect experience for the individual uh, and it's been very enjoyable uh, 
that you know sort of the updates that I've been going through as well as I've been activating and awakening this of the brain and those being shared with us. It's great. Yes, absolutely. And I just think it's so exciting that more and more people are understanding this. I mean, I think this was some I mean, this terminology I, I didn't know about until I was you know, well into my 30s. And it's it's really I, I, wonderful that people can start understanding it and, and being exposed to this already young. I mean, teenagers, it's really it's really amazing. And I think it's just all part of the quickening that we talked about, right? So things are changing. Like what comes first? It's it's the, uh, you know, the chicken or the egg. Are we changing and, and thus the earth is changing or is the earth changing and bringing about our, our change? But either way, we have to ride the wave, correct? Yeah, yeah. So we're evolving, but we're also coming back to the source because mm. many years ago, uh, that's who we were, right? We were being supplied and we embodied that and we were really connected to frequency and vibration around and we lived our life that way. And with a lot of mo- modern station that went away, you know, as we moved into more of the modern world and technology, but now we're we are getting comfortable in all this new modern station and technology as well as in that ancient part of ourselves that is being at work in and, and then merging the two into a beautiful a way of seeing the world and creating holding space for others. Excellent. Thank you. Well, you will be holding space for many at Conscious Life Expo February uh, 9th through 12th. What Do you know which days you will be doing your workshops, Maria? Uh, yes, I'm going to do my workshop Friday and Saturday. Okay, great. So be sure to make it over there and say hi um, to, to Maria and, and all the work. Now, have you, is this your first time at the expo? It is my first time. I'm excited about that. Oh my gosh. It's, it's going to blow your mind. Be ready. Okay. I mean, it is so amped up. It's a, You'll meet so many amazing people. That's what I just love. A lot of times I go on my own and I just bounce around. I have a notebook because I like to write things down old school. I don't want to be typing in ideas on my phone. And it's just wonderful. And I look forward to being in touch to hear what you think about it. So I, w- I wish you my yeah. very best. And, you know, Thank again, you. let's just this year, man, let's just do this. I mean, this it's a yeah. big year. It's a, And I know we say that every year, but it just is. And it's no fear, true. right? No fear. Love. Thank let's you. just love, align with the divine. And, uh, you know, thank you for the work you're doing, helping us all find our superpowers. It's wonderful. Um, thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> and thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Namaste. Truth be told, transformation, everyone. We are here to share these ideas. We can do this. No fear. Let's just stay light and be in joy and um, and be kind to each other. Be alert and just know that a lot is changing and you've got this. <laughs> and Tony Sweet is on every Friday to sort of further reinforce that, reinforce the mysteries. Be sure to catch his show, Truth Be Told, the original Truth Be Told, Fridays, 3 p.m. Pacific, live. So join the community and say hello. Also, Robert Hensley has new shows every week as well. So keep an eye on our archive. Be sure to follow and share as we wish to help spread the word. Thanks again for listening, everyone. Until the next time, shine on. <laughs>